Okay, so Ip Man, the complete collection, got released on 4K recently, and I just finished watching all four movies. Um, I wanted to let you guys know how the uh, visuals look and how the audio sounds. Before we get into that, I just want to talk a little bit about the movies, and I want to talk about the tech specs. So, if you guys haven't seen these movies, um, I recommend at least watching the first one, just renting it. I think it's on Netflix as well. So check out that one. The first one is like, there's no question. The first one's the best one. Um, <laughs> they they pro progressively kind of, the storytelling is not as good in the later ones. Um, but what are you going to do? Uh, I think Donnie Yen single-handedly like carries this. If he wasn't in this, like after he did the first one, if, if they made, I know they did make some more. Um, they did some spinoffs. But as far as like the actual Ip Man, you know, series with him in it, with Donnie Yen in it, um, he does a really great job. He's also in like Rogue One, Star Wars. He's in a couple other movies, like at least uh, here in the U.S. Um, so the movies, the first one's really, really good. Um, the other three, I'm not a huge fan of. I think, I think two is not bad. Three is pretty cringe, like. Whenever they get these, whenever I get, whenever they get the British people and the American people in here, it just like ruins the film. It's just, it's so cringe. I remember I saw three and I saw four in the theaters, like opening, if it wasn't opening night, it was, it was like opening week. And, um, like everyone in the theater is like cringing. Um, but the fight scenes are really good. The music's really good. Donnie Yen is amazing. So, uh, I'd say the first film is probably my my favorite martial arts film. Um, so at least check that one out. Let's talk about the tech specs. Um, the first two films are shot on 35 millimeter and the, uh, Ip Man 3 is shot in 2.8 K. Ip Man 4 is shot in 2.8 and 3.4 K. I believe it's like a mixture between that. You can definitely tell. So Ip Man 1 and 2, um, you can definitely tell those were shot on film and then right when you get into man 3 from before the film even starts just the the opening credits you can tell the the clarity is really there uh same with Man 4 so 3 and 4 are really consistent and then 1 and 2 are consistent with each other um they all have dolby vision and they all have dolby atmos uh the dolby atmos is only if you're listening to the cantonese version which is the original audio which I highly recommend. Don't don't listen to this in, in English. It's don't do that. It's already bad enough with the English that they have. I haven't even listened to it in, in the English. I don't want to. I think it's a 5.1 mix. So just listen to it in Cantonese. Um, right, so let's talk about the visuals. Um, I'm gonna work backwards. I'm gonna start with Ip Man 3 and 4. And the visuals on Ip Man 3 and 4 are outstanding. They reminded me of John Wick. If you guys have seen the John Wick movies on 4K, and if you haven't, dude, if you haven't seen John Wick on 4K, like, I don't know what you're doing watching this video. You need to go watch those. So Ip Man 3 and 4, they look really, really good. From the opening credits, you can tell, like, I, I watched Ip Man 1 and 2 first, and then I put in 3, and I was like, wow, this looks really good. Um, It looked better than the theater. It really did. Uh, I'm not going to go into spoilers here of any of the movies. I'm just going to point out a few scenes that I remember. In Ip Man 3, you have the, uh, so Donnie Yen, who's Ip Man, and his wife, I forget her name, but they go to this dancing class, and in the dancing class, the there's like a stained glass window, the sun's coming through, and the contrast is really, really nice. You can see the, the HDR, the Dolby Vision is really making that scene look beautiful. Anytime they're, they're doing the dancing, it's just, wow. Absolute, like, reference scene right there. Um, all the close-ups, not even close-ups, just almost every shot in those, in three and four is really crystal clear. The digital, it's, there's like no noise. It's a very clean digital image. Um, any, any lights, any candles um, look really good in, with this Dolby Vision encode. Um, so yeah, visuals are really good, really, really solid, um, you know, eight out of 10, nine out of 10 visuals, uh, any of the fight scenes, especially in Ip Man 3, 
the final fight scene. I'm not going to get into any spoilers, but um, the, you know, when Ip Man's fighting the, the other Wing Chun guy, really, really stand out for Atmos as well. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about sign, sound later, but at least for visuals, they're fighting on this marble uh, floored, the arena is like, has this marble flooring. And each marble is really, really, really tiny, and it's it's like a cyan color. And you can really see each pebble very clearly, and you can see the reflection of the of the lighting like sparkling off of it. It's really outstanding. All the swords you can see, like it's it's really, really crystal clear. So I was really happy with those two movies. It's unfortunate that those are the worst of the, of the four it's not even it's not even a question those are the absolute worst uh i think Ip man 3 is i think Ip man 3 the first half is kind of hard to get through and then Ip man 4 um i think the second half is harder to get through so kind of a mixed bag let me know what you guys think about the actual movies um but visually three and four look great let's talk about the visuals in one and two Let's start with one. So I put in Ip Man 1, super, super excited, right? I was like, this is my favorite foreign film. This is my favorite martial arts film of all time. I love Donnie Yen. I love the music. I want to see how it looks in 4K. I put it in instantly. And before I say this, I love grain, okay? I love grain. I'm not a grain hater. I really love uh, filmic movies. I go... I. When theaters were open, I was I even saw several movies in 70 millimeter. I saw The Hateful Eight in 70 millimeter. I saw Dunkirk in 70 millimeter. Right. I saw uh, The Dark Knight in 70 millimeter. Um, it's not necessarily that the grain gives me a problem. It's just that the entire first movie was it looked like a bad Blu-ray. It really did. Just talking about resolution, I'm not going to talk about HDR yet. The resolution was really, really lacking. There was a lot of noise. There was, of course, there was a lot of grain. There was some shots where there wasn't that much grain. But even in the clean shots, even in the best shots in Ip Man 1, it still didn't, oops, it still didn't look like 4K. It really didn't. So I was like, kind of, I was kind of disappointed. And then I was like, well... Let's look forward to the HDR. So how's the HDR look? Yeah, the HDRs. It's not here, guys. I even thought I put the wrong disc in. So I, I checked on my Panasonic, and I think the peak brightness was like 200 nits, which, I mean, I just watched Tenet on 4K. That has a low peak brightness as well, but um, the HDR in Tenet is, is much better than this. I mean, there's there's no... There's no wide color, there's no popping colors, there's no bright highlights. There's even when there's like a light in the movie, there's like a little candle. It's just it's very dull. So I put in the 1080p blue day blu-ray disc and it looked to, to my eyes, I'm watching on a 77 inch OLED, the brand new <laughs> CX OLED. The the Blu-ray looked exactly the same, guys. So super disappointing. Um I'm gonna have to give the the first film like a d like a six out of ten a five out of ten like it it looks like a look looks like a blu-ray so as far as 4k movies go this is probably one of the worst 4ks i've seen um hey i'm just letting you guys know this if you if you were looking forward to getting this set and it man 2 looks a little bit better than it man 1 so i would give it man 2 maybe like a d a d plus or just a D. You know, I'll give Ip Man 1 like a D minus, and I'll give Ip Man 2 like a D plus or a D. I think Ip Man 2, um, actually, no. I'm going to give Ip Man 2 a D as well, because even though it's brighter, the highlights are blown out. Like, in Ip Man 2, when you have the boxing final, final fight, there's a lot of these windows, and the light that's coming through the windows is just so overblown, all the detail is just gone. Um, Ip Man 2 does have um grain as well and the, as, as does the first movie i thought the grain was a little bit more refined in the second movie it looked a little bit um cleaner but there was there were some shots like there was an opening shot in man 2 where the grain was was really heavy this is one of the opening scenes in the second movie 
But look at that grain. Woo! All right, so let's talk about audio now. Let's talk about the Dolby Atmos track. Um, I'm going to say it's a similar story to the visuals. I think 3 and 4 had had decent. Well, the visuals were really good in 3 and 4, and I think the Atmos track, as, at least as far as the overheight effects go, it was okay. K. I I mean, in a couple of the fight scenes in 3, in 3 there was some, some really cool, um, you know, sound effects. There was like a, a sweeping um, sword that like went over Ip Man's head and you could like hear it and that was, that was pretty cool. Um, there was, there was like this one scene where like this guy jumped up in the air and came down kind of like in Mad Max and you could hear it in the, in the overheads, but as far as the whole thing, as as far as all four movies go, the first movie and the second movie, like, I didn't really hear any immersive sounds in there, even in the fight scenes. Not to say the sound is bad. I think the sound in, in all four movies is pretty good. The punches have a, have a nice thud to them, and the sound effects are pretty good. There's there's stuff happening in all, in all the speakers at, at given times. Um... I would have to say the sound is is good. I wish they did. I wish they used more with the overhead speakers. But as far as bass goes, the soundtrack has a lot of bass drum in it. It has these. It also has a lot of Chinese drums, and you can really hear that. Um, so for audio, I'm gonna have to say across the board. I think one and two didn't have as as many height effects, but one and two one and two still sounded good, and they had great surrounds. And I think three and four added a little bit more height effects so i would say have to say maybe um maybe a seven and a half for audio um and then for the newer movies maybe an eight so uh you know let me know what you guys think about these movies um i i still think it's a good pickup um i did an unboxing of this set but the box is really really outstanding it comes in a really solid box with this really nice sort of textile um material and it, it's it's a solid box looks really nice you get all four movies you get a poster you get a little booklet and it's 50 bucks right so 50 bucks that's what 13 dollars a movie so even if um even if the first movie pretty much looks the same maybe it maybe it's five percent better maybe it's five or ten percent better but even then i'm gonna say it pretty much looks the same as the blu-ray I'd still say if you're a fan of the series, go ahead and pick it up. If you're not a fan and you haven't seen these, I would probably not buy these. Um, sorry, I would just I would just watch the first one. And uh, if you really really like the other ones, I would pick it up because three and four look out absolutely outstanding. And there's some cool um, Atmos effects, and the HDR looks really good in three and four. All right, so thanks for watching, guys. Catch you in the next one.